So there's this fight going on on Saturday. I'm sure you guys know what's going on. Floyd Mayweather is fighting Robert Guerrero. And I actually wanted to bring in someone that I know somewhat dear to my heart, Britton Harden. Uh, firstly, thank you for coming in. No problem. Thank right. you. Uh, as you guys may not be aware, obviously, because you have not seen his face on the TYT network, Britton is a former amateur boxer in the south side of Chicago. Of course, people know where I'm from, so they're going to hate you automatically. And uh, <laughs> so, so I wanted to get your perspective because you have trained before. You've gone through these fights. Uh, so let me ask you this. If you were, let's say, uh, Floyd Mayweather, granted you've been through it, and I mean, your skills are impeccable, Absolutely. Uh, obviously, as his Absolutely. are as well. Hypothetically, uh, you went through a lot of crap. Mm -hmm. You maybe did a lot of things that a lot of people are not in favor of. Right. Uh, legal problems going on. And then it comes up to the surface. You serve all this time in solitary, 23 hours a day. You get one hour just for running around. You're used to training so much at weird hours. And then Ruben Guerrero says what he said in the press conference and he says, we're gonna beat that woman beater, we're gonna beat him. That's bullshit, man, we're gonna beat him. So that's my, that's my two cents uh, on, on Ruben Guerrero. I mean, he was so composed throughout that whole thing. Would you be as composed? Absolutely not, Rick. And uh, Floyd was not composed also. He has a good way of masking that in a good way of channeling he it. He claimed he was texting his girlfriend. Well, sort of I mean, he, he can claim what he wants, of but he, he absolutely heard what was said, and you have to understand that there's going to be some outlet for that, uh, for that energy that he was composing, that he contained while he was at the press conference. Obviously, he's trying to uh, show himself in the best light that he can. You know, he does want to show that he's reformed, which I do believe that he is to a degree, but his natural instinct is to be a fighter. You know, so if you say something like that to me, um, we're gonna come to blows. Well, you mm -hmm. mentioned that there's gonna be a lot of grappling, a lot of mm -hmm. pushing, a lot of shoving. Doesn't mm -hmm. that go in Guerrero's favor? Because in his last fight against Berto, that's all mm -hmm. he did. Absolutely not. And I'll say that because he has, Guerrero in his mind thinks that he's gonna fight the same fight that he fought against Berto. He thinks he's gonna fight that same fight Try against Floyd. Try to stay Floyd. in Floyd's hips, exactly. stay on top of him. The yep. thing is, that isn't Berto's natural style of fighting. A, Berto is a boxer. He moves, he uses feet, and he uses, it, and he uses his jab. Mm -hmm. Guerrero was able to take those tools away from him and make him fight that inside fight. And he knew that he could utilize that style because he watched the Victor Ortiz fight. Now, Mayweather is a totally different animal on the inside. He loves fighting on the inside. He knows how to counter, he knows how to block. He's stronger than a lot of people give him credit for. You know, like he, you'll see him get in that defensive posture and you think that he's not necessary, you think he's just blocking, but he's nudging you with his elbow and creating space for his punches. And that's where he breaks his fighters down on the inside. You'll see the beginning of the Ricky Haddon fight. It looked like Ricky Haddon was doing, you know, was pushing the action, but every time they got tied up or every time he was on the inside, Flo was taking him to the body, breaking him down slowly but surely. And I think that what's going to happen Which in ended this in fight, 10 rounds because he wore him down. Yeah. Absolutely. You take a fighter to the body, they don't like it. Robert Guerrero realizes that Floyd is a lot stronger than I thought he was. His defense is better. He's faster and his angles are amazing. You know, I think that he's going to have to try something different, which is box. And everyone knows you can't outbox Floyd. Yeah. So I see this fight actually either ending on cuts or ending via late knockout. Uh, in Floyd's favor. Like ninth or 10th round, are you thinking? I say 10 or 11. Okay, 10 or I, 11. I can see him knocking him out in 10 or 11. Okay, because Robert Axel, who I, I know that you've, you've commented to me before, you've seen on TYT Sports, mm -hmm. he actually said 9 or 10. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Absolutely. You guys are thinking the same thing. Absolutely, would he's you, a very smart man. Would you, <laughs> would, you say that, uh, would you say that Floyd's defense is his best asset? I mean, he, he lands lead right hands like crazy. Mm -hmm. he, his Philly shell defense, though, is impeccable, it seems like. I wouldn't say his defense is his best asset. Really? Because, what is? Because you'll see in his last few fights, he's been hit uh, more than we're used to seeing him fight. In the Cotto fight, sure. And in yeah. the Victor Ortiz fight. Victor Ortiz kind of got inside on him, uh, but he's still comfortable, he's still composed. I think that his best asset is his uh, endurance. He was able to outthink Cotto in 10, 11, and 12 as where Cotto started to wear down. And I think that that was ultimately Cotto's undoing. Mm -hmm. You know, Floyd came out strong. I think I gave Floyd uh, the first five rounds in that fight. Cotto came on the next three or four, and then Floyd, his, his thinking, 
you know, his, 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 the way he processes the fight. All right, so let me just give you a hypothetical, even though it mm -hmm. seems totally unreasonable at this point, especially in our N interview. Nothing's unreasonable. Do you, uh, well, just hear me out. Do you think that Guerrero can kind of stalk him repeatedly, chase mm -hmm. him down into the rope, not even chase him, not like mm -hmm. an Abder Mares chase, yeah. you know, at the Staples Center, which yeah. you were at. <laughs> but I mean, I, but I mean, like, you know, can he, can he mm -hmm. kind of force him back repeatedly and try to get to that conditioning at all? I think, uh, I think that that's his game plan, is to force Floyd keep into going the ropes forward. and to stay busy. And I think that if he has any chance in winning a fight, I'll give him two instances, which I always give any fighter, A, you catch a fighter cold, any, any man can be knocked out if he's cold, no sweat on him Absolutely. first round. Anybody can be knocked out. Um, and the only other chance that I give him is if Floyd, I have heard his father say um, that his defense isn't gonna be lacking and that you'll see all the defense you wanna see. If Floyd becomes reserved, is very uh, choosy with his punches, and he keeps his hands at home, and, and uh, Robert Guerrero is able to just stay busy. Right. I'm thinking he's gonna have to throw over 100 punches per round to, to, to win this fight. He's gonna have to force him into the ropes and just stay busy. And Floyd won't be throwing any punches back. Because I think that, you know, Robert, That's the only way he wins his I fight. I think that's the only way he wins well, Floyd, his fight. Obviously, Floyd's going to punch. And I mm -hmm. mean, if he does get backed up, he's yeah. going gonna to go into like a little Sergio Martinez mode and land lead right hands, Absolutely. duck under, and then Absolutely. go around. But honestly, I think that we'll be very surprised. I don't think we're going to see Floyd doing too much backing up. I think that Floyd... He's going to establish it early. No, I think he's going to establish... I think, I think the first four or five rounds are going to be competitive because I think that Floyd's going to be willing to stand his ground a little bit more. And I think that, uh, you know, from what I hear was going on in his training, Floyd, the demeanor he's taken with his sparring partners is very aggressive. I heard he's been sitting down on a lot of his punches. And, uh, oh, and uh, one of his sparring partners said, he, I haven't experienced him this strong and this focused. Do you think that, that, Moy that Mayweather can kind of stand in the middle, center of the ring, he can trade with Guerrero? Can well, he afford to trade? Well, I don't think he can afford it with six more fights on a 36 year old body i don't think that he can afford to do that um i think that he's willing to try it out and so I you're think saying that his 36 year old body's a little frail guerrero should go to the body he's 36 you know you're you know boxing is a young man sport ultimately you know bernard hopkins and floyd mayweather those are oddities in the sport of boxing and and sergio martinez those are oddities in the sport of boxing and martinez see, is looking a little iffy now absolutely yeah but you know you, you see shame Shane fought against Margarito, <laughs> yeah, and he looked amazing. Yeah, he and then did. his next outing, he didn't look that amazing, you know. And and every fight after that, he looks less and less impressive, you know. And and I just just to use him as an example because he's a great fighter and he has great skills, but those natural skills diminish after a while. Sure. The last thing to go on a great boxer is his power. And I think that uh, Floyd is a lot stronger than people think that he is. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, I think that Robert Guerrero is in for a surprise once he tastes some of Floyd's power. I don't see, and what I don't see is I don't see Floyd getting hit as cleanly as he did in the Shane fight. And that's the most we've ever seen him hurt. I don't see him getting hit that hard by Robert Guerrero. Robert Guerrero is it because Guerrero is too, what is it? Is it, is it? is it that he's too slow? Is he gonna um, try to throw too many haymakers to try to connect? Well, I mean, well, the, well, his hands aren't as fast as Shane's and I don't think he has much power as Shane. He thinks that he's fast because he's coming up from the lower weight classes, but when you come up in weight, naturally the speed dies down a little bit. Um, you know, even with Pacquiao, one of the fastest fighters in the game, you, you kind of see him slow down sure. when he gets up in the higher weight classes. So he thinks that his speed is going to be there, but I, I just can't see him fighting the speed that he's fighting at 135 when he uh, fought Escobedo. He's thinking that that kind of speed is going to be there, and it's just not, not at 147. Floyd is accustomed to fighting at that weight. He's more natural at that weight. So you obviously have Floyd Mayweather winning this fight, as Absolutely. you told me before. Mm -hmm. Let's just do, because it's fun, and yeah. who, who gives a shit. Uh, who do you think is, could possibly be next? He signed that huge deal with Showtime. Yeah. Who could be next? Um, he has a couple options. Garcia. He, he has a couple options. I wouldn't put him against Garcia. No? Not yet, because Garcia is only at 140. He's going to fight one more uh, at 140. He's, he said he's going to fight. He's going to defend his title at 140 one more time. He's going to move up to 147, and I don't think that that would be you know, fair for him to be put in there with the best mm -hmm. 
you know, fighter of our era at, you know. It'd be fun to see Angel Garcia, though. Oh, Against absolutely. Angel. That'd be good. That would be I would really like to see good. Angel Garcia and Floyd Mayweather Sr. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good fight. That'd be good. That would but, be good. But um, he has a couple of, he has a couple options. He has uh, Tim Bradley. Would people want to see that, though? Would you, would you pay for that pay-per-view? If Tim Bradley gets past Juan Manuel Marquez, it would be interesting just because Juan Manuel Marquez is such a technician and he, you know, the, 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 the style that he fought against Pacquiao in this past fight, I mm -hmm. thought would have been the exact style that Floyd fought him in, you know? I thought that he would have, you know, relied heavily on his jab. He would have gave him misdirection. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how he got that first knockdown was misdirection. He hit him to the body a few times, lulled him to sleep. Sure. And, you know, as soon as he wasn't looking for it, he came with the overhand right, which we saw Floyd use in the Cotto fight. So I think that uh, Floyd is starting to sit down on his punches a little bit more, and these guys are surprised by his power. And I think that that's how he would have fought Pacquiao. Um, so if, he get, if Tim Bradley gets past... Juan Manuel Marquez, which I don't think that he will, but if he did, just for the sake of it, I think that would be an interesting fight. Okay. Um, he always seems to just muster up whatever it takes to win, you know? You like Timothy Bradley? I don't. <laughs> Why? Because um, of the Pacquiao? Because of the Pacquiao debacle? Let me tell you something about this guy, okay? <laughs> really quickly. We ordered the Pacquiao fight, okay? And I know you don't mind me doing this. We ordered the Pacquiao fight, and we all thought Pacquiao won, obviously. And when it was over, Britton Harden, I kid you not, when the scores were read, Bob Arum is the devil! Bob Arum is the devil! He screamed it. So I, I, think that, I think that's the reason that you probably hate Bradley as well. <laughs> no, because... You were furious. I was, I was hot because... I was hot because there was no way... I watched the fight and... I, <laughs> I agree. I sense the frustration. I agree that sometimes the commentators and the hype of certain fighters in the heat of the moment, they can get to people who don't really know boxing. They can alter your perception. It, they can alter Absolutely. your perception if you don't know what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. You're going to be live tweeting the fight? Mayweather fight? Um, no. I probably just convinced you to. Where can, where can people find your stuff? Where can they find you? At Cool Ass Britain. Lame. <laughs> what? got to be a lame. What else? What else? Lame. What else? That's that, it? That's it. Just cool. Twitter? Twitter and Instagram. It's the same name, baby. Coolest Britain. All right, there you go. Uh, enjoy the fight, everybody.